Welcome to Conversations in Integrative Medicine, sponsored by uh, the Holt Institute of Medicine and Natural Clinician. And I'm going to talk about a very specific subject, which is really omega-3 fatty acids and weight control. And why would I focus in on this area? Well, I think this is an area, again, that perhaps is uh, more important than hitherto supposed. Now, let's look at the omega-3 story and understand that we have a widespread deficiency, even if it's a relative deficiency, of omega-3 fatty acids, uh, largely because in, we have a very uh, big overabundance of omega-6 fatty acids in Western diets. And that uh, ratio of omega-6 to omega-3 is of the order of 10 to 20 to 1 in some circumstances. So the 6 to 3 ratio is out of whack in many individuals. And in fact we see in uh, third world countries where high levels of omega-3 fatty acids uh, were present in the diet, we see now with westernization of Asiatic diets or Asian diets, we, we see a circumstance now of starting to reverse this ratio and it's being proposed that this may be one of the reasons why we're seeing the emergence of um, uh, more westernized type disease profiles in some of these uh, uh, Pacific countries. So uh, we're seeing some trends here that are very important and they're epidemiological trends and they're obviously now subject to a lot of research. But the NIH consensus panel on essential fatty acids started talking about optimal ratios of omega-6 essential fatty acids in the diet to omega-3 being one to one. Few people can get to this particular ratio. So the idea of supplementing omega-6 fatty acids in my mind is probably for the birds. Um, and these products that are omega-3-6 um, are, in my opinion, to be avoided in most circumstances because the key initiative is to give the omega-3 fatty acids. Now, in this circumstance, uh, we see the promotion of vegetable sources of omega-3 fatty acids, but these vegetable sources, soybean oil, walnut oil, you know, all sorts of different promotions of omega-3 components, uh, flaxseed oil. Uh, these contain predominantly precursor molecules of omega-3 fatty acids in their active form. Now, the two active forms of omega-3 fatty acid, in simple terms, are icosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid, referred to respectively as EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA. EPA is convertible to DHA but you can't convert DHA to EPA and EPA is the one that tends to have the anti-inflammatory activity which is quite useful obviously in people with obesity where as I presented in different modules there may be underlying inflammation and in individuals with metabolic syndrome X. But we do know that EPA is probably best referred to as the emperor of fatty acids, E, emperor, E, EPA. And I've actually termed EPA the emperor of omega-3 fatty acids for obvious reasons. Now, let's look at how omega-3 fatty acids could really play a role in weight control. Well, clearly I mentioned one area, which is the anti-inflammatory effect. But here's a second area of great importance. We have a series of receptors in the body called peroxisomal receptors, which are really part of our genetic control of uh, insulin action, glucose regulation, and to some degree uh, cholesterol uh, synthesis and expression in the body. Um, what we see in many obese individuals or overweight people is the emergence of insulin resistance which underpins the metabolic syndrome X, which we variably uh, defined, but metabolic syndrome X is, use the word variable relationship or association of obesity together with high blood pressure, 
abnormal blood cholesterol, most notably hypertriglyceridemia, all linked by insulin resistance, associated with a litany of other diseases. And that was the concept I talked about of syndrome X, Y and Z, where we see in the metabolic syndrome the association of diseases uh, that are obvious, like cardiovascular risk, stroke, and less obvious associations, but clear ones with Alzheimer's disease, with depressed immunity, with polycystic ovary syndrome, unwanted body hair, hirsutes, acne in young women, and the list goes on, including uh, a tendency to develop uh, cancer. There are other associations with metabolic syndrome X described, notably a relationship between the syndrome and gastroesophageal reflux disease. So there are lots of different things that are coming together here uh, where we see our advanced lifestyle outpacing our ability to metabolically adapt to what we have uh, perhaps ill-advisedly called an advanced lifestyle. Um, perhaps again I mentioned we're tired of being told but we certainly have a tendency to be in the United States the uh, fattest in the world and we certainly have the most obese, uh, perhaps most idle children uh, in the world as well. Uh, these are part, this is part of our advanced lifestyle as we uh, negotiate the information technology world. So here we have uh, a circumstance with essential omega-3 fatty acids and the peroxisomal receptor complex and we see that insulin can sensitize uh, or be, the actions of insulin can be improved or promotion of insulin sensitivity occurs with omega-3 fatty acids. And in fact, this mechanism of action is through the PPAR complex or peroxisomal uh, complex that uh, alters insulin function and tends to sensitize insulin in these circumstances. So there's more than one reason to think about giving omega-3 fatty acids, their anti-inflammatory effects and their insulin sensitizing effects. And the benefits of omega-3 fatty acids go on and on and on. Uh, we have an association between obesity and abnormal blood cholesterol. We know that omega-3 fatty acids are good at altering cholesterol profiles towards uh, a more healthy range. Good example, reducing triglycerides. A very good study is showing us the reduction of triglycerides, especially in mature females. So we have uh, just complete continuity when we look at the potency and versatility of omega-3 fatty acids because we start to impact disorders that are present commonly in obesity. Um, I mentioned a variety of inflammatory disorders and of course uh, obesity is associated with a litany of diseases that could potentially benefit in part from the administration of omega-3 fatty acids. So uh, routinely any individual with metabolic syndrome X um, should perhaps consider supplementation with, with uh, omega-3 fatty acids and I use them routinely in individuals who are seeking uh, weight control. Now, how does this look in perspective to what's happened in, in the arena of weight control? Well, when one says giving healthy fatty acids or healthy fats, we're really talking often about omega-3 fatty acids and uh, their uh, ability to benefit somebody on a weight control program is really immeasurable in my mind. Thank you for listening to this segment and understanding the Omega-3 story.